Hi guys, so today we're going to be taking a look at one of the main things that people struggle with once they're fully onto Teams, which is finding things. So we did a previous video on this, but this is an updated one and brings together some other concepts uh, all in one place. So by the end of this video, you'll know how to sync files and folders with Teams. You'll know how to save links and where to keep those if you want to keep a list of them. And we'll have a look at saving items so you can just go back to them quite quickly in one list all within Teams without using anything else. I'm Gavin Jones, I'm Transformation Manager for a Fortune 500 company. All the tips we put on YouTube have come out of real life examples in my day job. I've got a new video on Teams coming out every single Tuesday, so make sure you hit the subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified every time we release a new video. And then let's get in and have a look at how to find stuff in Teams. Okay, so let's get in and have a look at the first way to keep track of where your files and folders are and find stuff in Teams. So this is specifically for files and folders. Um, if you go into the Files tab, um, Microsoft are updating the Files view so it's going to look a bit more like the SharePoint view. And as part of the update, they're going to put a sync button right into Teams, which isn't there in our version at the time of recording. So to sync something in Teams, you need to jump out into the SharePoint site. So in Files and Folders, uh, in Files tab, sorry, click Open in SharePoint, see the same view. And however far down the uh, tree you are in terms of nested folder tree, um, when you click Sync, it's going to sync everything in your view. So it, we're just in the testing channel, I and mean, if we click Sync here, we're going to sync everything that's in the testing channel now and in the future. If you want to sync everything in the team, you just need to come back out one documents, click sync, and it's going to sync everything in the team again now and in the future. If you've got Windows 10 and OneNote, then um, with files on demand, it's not going to take up any space on your computer until you um, download it. If you've got a very big team, it might um, mess up your OneDrive a little bit because it's going to sync, try and keep up to date with everything going on in the team. And if there's like tens of thousands of files or hundreds of thousands of files it's going to really slow down your OneDrive sync so just be mindful of that. So we'll just go back into the testing channel and click sync and that's going to sync everything in the testing channel. It's going to say you want to switch to OneDrive because it uses OneDrive to sync um, but again if you're not used to OneDrive um, the concepts of have become, become quite complicated in that OneDrive is your personal place to store things in the cloud. It's both on your machine and in the cloud. Um, that gets slightly more confusing with files on demand because they might actually not be on your machine even though you can see them in the folder view. And even more complicated is that then if you sync something from the team, which is public to the team by default and not private, it happens to use the OneDrive app to sync that to your machine, which again might not actually be your machine depending on whether they download the files or not. Um, so this gets quite complicated. Um, your OneDrive will appear on the left hand side as OneDrive. Anything you sync from SharePoint or the team will appear as your uh, organisation and then whichever team and channel you're syncing. So here's the one we just synced which is the testing channel and you can see everything um, is synced from that channel. It's got a little blue icon next to it which means it's in the cloud it's ready for us to download, we double click it um, and it's going to download and open it straight away. It's a little green tick, it means it's on your actual laptop. But once you've synced it there, that makes a few things easier. One, you can then save directly from Outlook, which is one of the main things that people struggle with um, in terms of having to download a file from if someone sent you an email and then upload it into the team. Um, obviously you can just send the email into the team, but if it's a chat or something else you want to keep. Sometimes people have got confused about that. So having it synced then allows it just to show up as another folder on your computer. Also, you can then just save files to the desktop. So if we wanted this one, right click, drag, uh, it says move to desktop, but then if we've right clicked and dragged it, we can then create shortcut here. So people can get back into the sort of old habit that you, people might have had in keeping links to shared drives on their desktop like this. So you can still do that in Teams if you want to just 
keep a short list of all the files that you've got uh, that you're working on you know, on your desktop, you can still do that in Teams with the sync. So that's the first way to keep track of stuff and find things in Teams. Second way to find things in Teams is via links and then the links you can do through a Word document, a OneNote, a Wiki, whatever you want. So for example, we can go into the Files tab again, pick up a link to a document, say get link, copy the link, and then basically then keep a list of a links wherever we wanna keep them. So if you uh, your main job is working in the channel, so if we were in the project team as was, and we're in the testing channel, actually it might be useful to keep a list of links uh, public because other people might want to use those. So we could create a wiki page um, and you could split down the links for certain things. And then when you go to paste the link in, um, obviously it's gonna look quite long and uh, unattractive. But if we click on it somewhere, you can click the link button at the top and um, I can't remember what file we just <laughs> we just did, but you could just call it a uh, link or something more useful if you've got lots of links. And just create a list of links um, with better descriptions than link back to everything that you want to keep handy. So you can the benefit of doing that is that then you can not just store files, you can get links to any post. So say we wanted to uh, link back to this post, click the three dots at the side, copy link, which we've just done, and then we go back to the wiki and um, stick in a link down here. Um, this one does format itself a bit better um, when you copy it from a post. Uh, you can delete the stuff that's not purple because that's not the link. Um, and then again, you could just rename it whatever you wanted to make it um, a bit more concise, but still go back. If we click out of the wiki to stop edit mode and click that, it's going to jump us into the post that we've just done and highlight it yellow for a little bit so we know which one the links to. If you didn't want to keep the links public, so we've just used the wiki in this um, channel here, you can use your own uh, wiki and then you've got a personal view there. So you can again just post into the wiki uh, but no one else is going to see that apart from you in your personal list. So you could have a personal list of files across different teams if you wanted to. So obviously you don't want to be posting public links to other teams in a, a different team in case people don't have permissions to see the next team, if that makes sense, hopefully. If you're a bit more old school, um, you could use Word and just make a list, a page of list of links. Um, or if you're already using OneNote, then to keep all your notes, that's a great place to then keep any links back to files or conversations you want to go back to. Could even use OneNote then for to-do list because it's got some um, to-do list uh, ticks and um, and tick them when you've read them or done the action on that post um, if you wanted to. If you're already using Microsoft To Do, um, again then you can post links into the um, comments bit. So we've just got an untitled list. Um, we can do, uh, I don't know, read link, create that task, and then in the notes section, paste the link to go back to what we've just been talking about in Teams. So you can um, put it in your uh, references, your wiki, your OneNote, to do. Basically, you can link to anywhere. Um, so don't forget that you can do that um, if you are one of those people that keeps um, losing stuff in teams or forgetting to go back to stuff there's, a, there's loads of different ways you can get back to what you were looking at I would say to do is the best thing if it's an action because then you can just put the link in it'll jump you back and you've got the context of the action if it's just something you want to reference I would say put it in wiki or OneNote um, because that's more like a reference uh, item so last but not least overlapping with the video we did before not to forget that you can just right click at click the three dots and click save this message. It jumps up to your little head icon. It says saved to show you where it's gonna go. And then when you click your head and then saved, you get then get a list of everything that you've saved and it'll jump you to wherever. And if you wanna 
then use that as your to-do list or you want to unsave it at some point just click the bookmark icon again and it disappears out of that list so let me just cover some of the differences between teams bit of teams and chat everything we just talked about you can do in the teams part of teams if you're in a teams chat you can use the links to files can't use links to a conversation and you can't sync anything from a chat with somebody because like I said in the previous video the files are stored in each other's OneDrive depending if it's a one-to-one -one chat or a group chat so sync you can only do in the teams bit of teams and you can't do in chat links you can link to files in both the teams part of teams and chat um, you can link to conversations in the teams bit of teams and not chat uh, saved items you can do across conversations in Teams and the chat part of Teams. And then as bonus one, which we've covered before, people generally miss the search box. It's just, I guess, not where people usually expect to see it. It's right at the top. Uh, it's always there and your eye sort of misses it. So if I want to say approved, search for approved, and um, you can then see everything, every message where there's approved in, see all the people that's approved, um, if there's anything there, and any file that's got approved in the message. You can then filter down, so obviously we were in the testing channel in the recap team, so we can then go and select uh, that team and select the channel to filter that those results down so then we've just got the list that we of the channel that we're in that we want to search and then we click those it's going to jump us right to the right point um, in that conversation thread just to note some of the old ones um, don't appear in the entire thread of the post it, uh, it appears a bit more like a chat window if there were some replies you'd see that they're sort of not nested on some of the older posts that it searches um, but you can still search everything um, as you would expect so what did you think give the video a like if you liked it let us know what you think in the comments is finding things in teams a struggle for you or your users um, let us know and which method do you like to use to keep track of stuff in teams let us know in the comments below remember to subscribe if you haven't already and click the bell icon got new teams videos coming out every Tuesday and then remember at me time we think there's a big opportunity for people to get better at running meetings please take a look at our app in the iOS app store and um, search for me time or visit www.metimeapps.com if you want to know anything else so thanks for watching so far and we'll see you in the next video